And now, like any good carpenter, we need to put the final nail into this Homer Mark coffin, a final parallel, which I'm sure is mere coincidence. In the Odyssey, we learn that Odysseus was quite the tecton, that's ancient Greek for craftsman, someone skilled at making things out of basic supplies. Odysseus built the famed Trojan horse and the bed in his home, which included a complete tree trunk. He made this for his new wife, Penelope, as well as a room to enclose the bed. While shipwrecked on the Isle of Ogygia, the home of Calypso, Odysseus built a raft in order to sail away and escape. Homer goes into great detail about just how Odysseus constructed these items and clearly wanted to depict Odysseus as a very skilled tecton. What are the odds that of all the vocations Jesus could have had, he would be a tecton just like Odysseus? Is this not the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James and Joseph and Judah and Simon? And just in case you're wondering what the Greek word translated as carpenter really is, here's a look at the actual manuscript from the earliest known complete Bible in existence. And the Greek word rendered as carpenter is tecton. And with this, the final nail in the coffin has been placed. There is, in my mind, simply no way Mark could have recorded actual events in the life of Jesus, which also just happened to parallel this many events of a character in a fictional story written 800 years earlier. The only answer that makes sense is that Mark copied from the Odyssey, the Iliad, and Greek mythology, as did many other writers of fiction in the ancient Greco-Roman world. All of this and much more can be found in Dennis R. MacDonald's fantastic book, The Homeric Epics and the Gospel of Mark. I want to thank Dr. MacDonald also for sending me the images of the Dioscuri coins and sculptures as I was having a bit of trouble finding those with a generic Google search. This concludes the section on Mark's reliance upon Greek mythology and again, the impact upon the question of the resurrection cannot be overstated. If Mark contains multiple fictional scenes, and Mark is our earliest gospel, and Matthew, John, Luke, and Acts depend on the written text of Mark, well, you do the math. In the next section, we'll look at the ending of the original story Mark did write and see if perhaps even the empty tomb scene can be traced back to a common literary motif. See you then.